back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh So promise you don't want no Yeah, bro, I was Bro, I ain't been able to get no sleep I've been fucking trying to get my things back You got your stuff on silent? Yeah, I put my phone on, uh, do not disturb You got your computer? I think it's still on that bitch from last time Yeah, it's on do not disturb <clears throat> Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100 with you. We are your host, Harrison. Nice. All right, so we are jam packed today, welcoming back, but this is going to be a sorrowful episode because this will be Najee's last consistent episode because he is about to go on deployment. Um, we sold him for a washing machine and a pack of Pringles. The deal was he would be giving up butt, but no secrets. For the country um we're trying to get this whole student debt thing settled out and they wanted a tall deep voice nigga with light eyes so you know some decisions had to be made we pulled the plug so uh hey he will be out at sea for the next six seven months for deployment so um you know i wanted to start off first asking you know how you feeling about this you you leave tomorrow so when this episode drops you'll already be gone so yeah so uh I mean, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I feel like, you know, deployment is just like anything else. I mean, you, I don't think you can ever be, like, perfectly prepared. Like, you don't know how it's going to be. You know, if you're going to get out there and be like, damn, I forgot this, damn. You know, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it is what it is. Um, I'm going to be ready as much as I can. And so i report tomorrow, and then we're going to be, you know, we can't leave the ship and all that. And then we leave first thing in the morning and, we leave at like three in the morning or some crazy shit, and then we heading off. We'd be underway for like for like fourteen days, and then after that, every other time after that, we should only be out to sea for maybe like six days at a time. So, what's your mindset like, man? Honestly, we're like I don't know. Like I feel like I'm in a fucking like a rabbit hole, bro, because I got so much other like dumb shit going on. You know how like right before something like this happened, you always got crazy. So I got a whole lot of crazy stuff that's really been happening like every day. So my mind ain't even being able to be ready to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go on deployment. My, my mind ain't even been on that shit. So I can't even tell you, bro, like, I don't know. Did you give yourself enough time on one to just keep yourself busy? Cause you know, you got the, the tick 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 i didn't i didn't i didn't i didn't i didn't give myself i didn't give myself really no time i kept myself busy why do you think because i'm because like i said i'm going through a whole lot of dumb shit. so the easiest way to the easiest thing to do is just stay busy you know what i'm saying like that's the easiest thing to do mm. only reason i ask you know coming from you know i just left the ship i'm at the hospital now when that stuff starts you know you go right into it and Seeing that you you took a trip and you were moving and you're doing a bunch of things, if you didn't give yourself a real good time to kind of decompress or anything before you start, you get out there on the sea and you out there, you know. So I know you you started off on the ship, but I know it's been a long time since you've been. So you know, yeah, I just, 2013. It's been a long, long, long time. It's been 2000. I left 2015. So yeah, I, on the ship I'm good. I, you know, so I know what the fuck going on. But it ain't, you know, what I'm saying like, and I'm a first class now. So that's that's a whole different kind of motherfucking, you know, thing that you're dealing with. Yeah, but you know, it shouldn't be too bad. But we're pulling for you. Um, I wanted to give you the first segment, man, and also just wanted to tell you thank you for coming on and being a consistent guest. I mean, I'm sorry, coming on and being a consistent host and being a consistent presence on the show that really helped build the identity that it is today you will surely be missed and you're irreplaceable mainly because you know you have a social security number and a name but other than that like i said just for the show standpoint man you know like i said we we like to give people their flowers i know we did it on the hundredth episode but while you out there see hopefully this coming back to the mic or going to your TikToks or skincare or whatever, you know, keeps you motivated to just keep, you know, pushing for that day that you get back. Um, I know that, you know, you stepped into a role that you weren't used to doing, but, you know, you've adjusted as time has gone by. 
So, you know, I wanted to make sure, you know, you got your onus and odds. Uh, I'm going to miss these street market sales that you put up here. Hey, yeah, I'm selling, um, I'm selling Badusi cream. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, right now I also got these, uh, I got these tarot cards that, you know, I made my own special tarot cards to tell the future, you know. And if also, you know, um, I fucked around and mixed ammonia and bleach and Mr. Clean and some other stuff. And so now I got floor cleaner. So me and my crew, you know, I'm going to miss the million of Jamaican Jamaican products that you have sold for the masses. Uh, I'm going to miss the tireless fight of me trying to put something in your head just for you to go all day, just for you to sit there and tell me uh, that you still stick with the same point, even if you're lying. Uh, but I am going, like I said, just... Hmm? I don't be lying. Sure. So, like, just that's another example. That's what I said. I'm going to miss the lies. But, um, like I said, I'm just going to, you know, make sure that we keep it. I'm going to hold it down. Of course, I, you know, I'm going to do what I do. But we want to make sure that we give, you know, the floor to just, like I said, it's a decompression zone. So, you know, it's a lot of people here in the military listen to the show. And I, we, I never deployed, but we was out so much over the summer last year. You might as well have thought it was deployment. And, you know, I did want to know, does deployment scare you at all about being out there or, you know, just being away, seeing that you built a life here on the ground? Uh, I'm not going to say deployment scares me. What I'm going to say is I think that I'd be I, like deployment itself don't scare me, but I'd be thinking like, damn, I got this business going on. I got my skincare going on. I got my crystal business. You know what I'm saying? I got my I got my laser engraving. I got the pat. I got so much stuff that's going good for me that it's like, damn, you know, like a lot of stuff I might have depend on people when, you know, like you're not used to depending on people like that. Like my Airbnb, I might have to get I might have to teach somebody and depend on them to hold my Airbnb down. You know what I'm saying? And I can't be here to really handle that stuff. I, you know, like my car situation, like. I got I to gotta figure out, like, dang, like, because the plan I have for my car, that changed today. So now it's like I got a day left. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this. So it's really just like I don't think deployment scared me. I think it's just the, the missing of everything else because I don't think people are used to, you know, just kind of getting took out of their lifestyle and just being like, hey, you got to drop everything. So if you leave some food or you leave something somewhere they don't need to be at, it's going to be there. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure that you really check everything and got everything, you know, have a plan for anything to go wrong because you can't just jump up and really, you know what I'm saying, move and go, hey, let me go. I'm going to run down here real quick and fix it. So I think that's the thing that bothers me. I don't think I'm really scared of the appointment. I think I just want to make sure that all my plans have a plan, basically. Yeah, I understand that. And, you know, car situation, I already told you. Send it to your boy, you know. It'd be the best Tesla decision you ever made. But I understand. Keep your head up, man. You'll be back soon enough. Just know from one brother to another, man, I am going to miss you with your big headed ass. I am going, you know, it's, I don't, it's no fun if I don't have the second place person to look at as I come in for non plan. But, Keep your head up, man. It'll go by quick. And then when you come back, we'll rock it like we never left. I mean, you've seen what I done did on short time. So yeah. make sure we gave that. Uh, everybody make sure. Tell everybody where they can email you to or follow you if they want to send you care packages. Or I don't know if you're getting letters or anything, but care yeah, packages. Care packages. I'm, I'm going to have to just post it because it, it, it's, it's long. It's a crazy uh, email thing. But, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. but oh, go ahead. No, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna post it all on my page. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you know, I post it, I post it on my main page. It's like, hey, so if you want to see me care about it, you want to send whatever it is. I got you. So I know uh skip into that. I am 0 for 2 on predictions. If anybody doesn't know what that means, the day before the Titans played the Bengals, we did an episode two days before, and then I posted that episode the Friday before saying we we're gonna win. This was a Super Bowl team. We was going to win it all. Bada bing, bada boom, bada boom. Post it on Friday. Titans get their ass. We don't get our ass. Well, Ryan Tannehill blows the game for us on Saturday. Fast forward it to the draft. Oh, God. I ask a particular question about A.J. Brown. I say, do you? We ask, I said, do you think a deal needs to be done by the draft? We think everything is good. Everything is kosher. 
drop that we record that on sunday drop that episode on wednesday the draft is thursday bing 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 before the 18th pick there's a trade for the titans bing 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 guess who got traded now mind you i found out somebody different somebody different texted me and was like yo they traded aj brown they don't even know on tv what happened before it came from so i found out a couple minutes before then twitter finds out and so i'm like yo this shit tripping i know they lying then they go the titans have just traded i was just like lord please no so the titans for the people who don't know for all my tennessee fans traded aj brown i am 0 for 2 is why i said this because we just put the episode out one of the clips for you going to the youtube is aj brown's contract and us signing him maybe sometime in july that ain't happening because aj brown is yep. in the eagles okay this is a very hard weekend mainly so, the so yeah we're gonna see him in july like we, we worry about the contract right now because it'll probably be changed in july nope no that shit hurt my heart like i well we had just got titans season tickets we was i want plan on seeing them i was gonna try to use some type of connect to get a picture with them it just for the people that don't know aj brown wanted a new contract which that part was known what happened behind the scenes was aj brown apparently stopped talking to the titans three weeks ago aj brown was traded before the actual draft even happened because i was like how the hell as soon as the titans picked they said the eagles signed aj brown to a hundred million dollar contract so from what it seems like that christian kirk stuff pushed aj's agent to ask for astronomical number of guaranteed money which is what teron was saying on the show so the tight he said if he would have got 22 million the titan he would have stayed titans only offered him 20. the titans deal was going to push it up to what he was asking for his guaranteed money which was what teron was saying pushed it so astronomical it just basically he had asked for a trade three weeks ago didn't know that at the time so he wanted his way out ruined my thursday didn't even give a fuck about the draft but i can say sunday now when this episode is being recorded wednesday when you're here drop the titans recovered nicely i want to say thank you aj brown i'm not like everybody else i was hurt but i'm not like everybody else we got three great years out of aj and even though the titans could have kept him this season and put him on franchise tag whatever they played for the future got somebody that's the equivalent of him in the first round for 18th pick got picks back for the julio trade that it was and they seem to build for the future so ryan Tannehill, count your days all right malik willis all right count your mother effing you know what ryan Tannehill? let me just say this too let me just pause this one you are lucky you are even getting in the building if it was me running that you be parking at the Exxon right outside of Nissan Stadium, and you be parking where you got a long stretch where they got to pick up people who want to go to the Titans facility and watch them practice, and they got to get picked up by the shuttle. That's where you will walk every day, all right? Every day that you will walk there until you prove something. I don't need no. You are the reason why we lost A.J. Brown. If you do not throw three picks, we don't lose A.J. Brown. No. And even if we did lose A.J. Brown, we already won a ring at that point so sure. you are my cause for that but to get back to the draft speculate i mean not speculation but to get back to the draft uh aj i'm sorry the titans picked up uh Traylon burks they picked up i want to say roger mccrary in the second round db they picked up uh malik willis offensive uh the quarterback from liberty that was everybody was projecting supposed to be a top 10 pick they picked up uh offensive tackle from uh ohio state and then they picked up this one tight end from maryland he has his very hard name so i'm not gonna mess it up i think so i'm not gonna even pronounce it but he ran the fastest time of like any receiver at the tight end as at the combine he ran like a four three seven so the titans basically drafted with the intent to go for the future because after next year they could cut ryan Tannehill. so yeah, they drafted a lot of a lot of uh offensive teams they drafted four off out of nine picks they drafted quarterback wide receiver 
running back, wide receiver, tight end, offensive tackle. They drafted six offensive players, three defensive players. Yeah. Cornerback for defense, linebacker, and safety. Yeah, so they drafted a safety from Tennessee. But, I mean, their defense was already stout as it was. So, I mean, they had rebuilt the defense for the last couple of years. But, you know, what was your opinion? I did this little spiel just giving everybody like a recap. What was your opinion on all this? I mean, I, honestly, man, like I don't have nothing to say until we see these people play because we ain't had time and time and time again to where we drive some good people. You know what I'm saying? And, and be like, oh, man, we got this guy. We got this receiver. He going to be just like you said, the, the little dude's the fastest time. And then he get out there and we don't see nothing. So I just can't wait until we f- see like our first game. We kind of see people get in. You know, like I would love to go because, you know, Titans always do it. We can come to the practice and you can actually see them in the, you know what I'm saying, in the bubble. Like I would love to go and actually see the people like real life. But I don't know, man. Like, I just want to see how we're going to be. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like we look good. Like, we've been looking good. Like you said, if if, if Tannehill was the mess up, if we can figure out a way to, you know, put in a new guy in there and just, just run with it, I'm down. But I just don't know how we're going to be until, we, until I see a game. That's how I feel. I've learned not to predict off the draft, so I'm not really tripping on it. Like I said, when the season comes through. But we'll, we'll go ahead and – wait for that i don't want to I've, I've already made my adult uh my adult what is it called um when you accept some, i've already made my adult ex- accept acceptance of this so i'm going to just be uh fully fully grown up and just say you know what people grow apart but it did hurt that friday um playoffs are on right now i know memphis is playing golden state right now oh, yeah. uh Basically, uh, the Brooklyn Nets were the only team to get swept. We caught that. Uh, right. I'm trying to think. Uh, Milwaukee won game one, so I don't know if game two will be playing by the time the episode happens, but they're winning old. So for the second round, first off, for the second round, huh? Huh? Milwaukee's playing the Celtics. So for just this second round, quick picks. Just this second round, who do you got? You got Milwaukee Celtics, Miami, Philly, with no Joel B, who's out for a concussion and an orbital fracture. That's from the east. From the West, you have. I got uh, Philly. I, I, I got. I mean, I, I don't got Philly because without him, they're nobody. So that yeah. that's an easy pick. And the Celtics and uh, and uh, damn, who you just said? Celtics and Milwaukee. Celtics and Milwaukee. Like I, I don't know. That's hard for me because I want to see Tatum. Like I like the Celtics this year. Like they and I, I hate the Celtics team, but I just like Tatum. But I mean, I also like the Great Freak. So I mean, that's really I take whoever win out of that. You know what I'm saying? But if 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 Tatum get a win, I'll be cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Milwaukee, he already got his big ring, so he cool. And then we have for the West, we have we have uh, Dallas versus Phoenix, and then we have Golden State versus Memphis. Dallas versus Phoenix, I don't really care about neither one of them teams. But Golden State versus uh, versus Memphis, I don't. That's 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 they actually goal. playing right now. Golden State look good, man. Them, I don't. Them, they look like they back, like they're back, back. Like they look good. But I like Ja. But if you shut down Ja, then they deep though. Don't don't do. I mean, Memphis but I'm deep. just saying. But still, Memphis deep. Ja, but ja is the heart though. If you fucking have him and he have a game off, Memphis don't seem the same. They deep. They good. But it's just like Ja is that. Ja actually though. had like a pool pool kind of series against. Uh, so I don't know, man. I, honestly, I think I would like to see Memphis them win, but I don't. I think though, I think Go State stay going. Like I think Go State gonna win. I think Milwaukee will probably win. Yeah, uh, and then the other teams. I hope. Well, I'm sticking with Memphis because I didn't think they would be playing uh, Golden State in the second round, but I picked them for the fi- finals. But uh, Memphis and Miami, double M, Memphis. But uh, I'm going with them. My funny thing I happen to see, did you see why Ben, ben Simmons' newest injury problem, he was like he has a mental block. He has a mental, like something mentally causes his back to flare up for his injury. So I guess it's from whatever he's dealing with mentally triggers the injury in his back, and that's why he's not playing. That's crazy. I just, 
<laughs> he's finna mess, he finna mess around and get slid out the NBA. I think he I think he won't yeah. I feel like you remember when everybody was calling Paul George playoff P and he went through like that like big spill of like when motherfuckers was just really, really clowning. Yeah. That's what he's gonna go through, except ten times worse. Like they're gonna come in his manhood. And on top of that, he doesn't shoot the ball. So it, yeah. it, it was just funny from it was just funny from that point. But you know, I just I looked at I looked at him, I was just like, bro, you have like I feel like it's just all of the kids in general. Like they have they they do dumb shit all day. Like I'm watching one thing, and it's like you got these college football players doing one on one drills on a slip and slide, and then you're gonna talk about, oh, I tore my knee up, or doing you doing dumb shit, or it's this one girl she running a track race, and she more worried about finishing to finish her TikTok video. Than winning the actual race, you know, like that. That is so baffling. The mind. Remember, Calvin Ridley just sat out for mental issues for the entire season, then fucked around and got suspended for this upcoming season because you was betting on games. This even like even some of the stuff that like I'm I'm on House of Highlights and shit all the time. They post the stuff that is stupid. So if House Highlights gonna post all this stuff. Of course, you're gonna keep doing it. But is like y'all not even like I be watching these DB drills, right? And I'm looking at it and like it's basically foul. I mean, like flags, but they getting hyped, like lockdown, lockdown. Like, I don't know what you played um on football, but I know I play defense and I play both sides, but I, I especially know like defense. You can't just hold the motherfucker before the like as soon as the thing like you can't jam like that's basically you off size one two, that's not good technique. Okay, because let's just say Josh, you running a, a five route or a three route, boom, it's a quick. You throw me off course, yes, but for the most part, that those quick routes are where that jamming may help you. But if you running a post or a corner, you doing all this extra stuff at the line shows me nothing about your technique shows me nothing about your footwork can you read hip movements can you turn can you do any of this and can you turn at the right time to swat the ball down or stop the player from getting the ball but we hyping up bad techniques it's almost like basketball like we just walking up to the half court point half court line and just shooting up threes we're not getting any sets everything is iso everything is you know like the trey songs everybody wants to do just bad techniques and we just this it's this wave of just like it's so stupid like i'm turning to this old person like like old girl she, I, I heard she won the race but if you immediately run off to the side to go match link up with a TikTok dance i'm benching you you know like like one dude he shot a three-pointer or he shot free throws or something and then he stopped twerking after the the free throws all right bro get your head like you're not you're not focused and I think when people, I think this is a disconnect between the younger people and the older, and at least us, right? We not telling y'all not to have fun. We not telling y'all not to worry about your mental health. We not telling you not to do any of this, right? But there's a time and a place for everything. You need to focus on the game. The girl I was talking about for the race, you can see her running to the, you can see her running to the camera you're not even worried about she ain't put her head for it she ain't do none of that i don't like i said i don't know if she won but like your focus is not there it's one boy recording and i'm, I'm putting my hand up he's recording how he's supposed to go do a race and he's on there saying how he's hiding and you put it on house of highlights so if i see this you off my team you get what i'm saying like it's sure. like tell or i give you other dumb stuff they do one dude's like, let me show you how I snuck down to the the court level seats at a game. Like y'all about y'all about clout and snitching. Like this makes no sense. Yeah, I think, and then I think the other big thing is you you gotta think like we the generation where our role models and stuff was the Jordans and the Kobe's. So it was all about the win. You know, saying so it's all about the W. It was all about the training hard. It was all. But that's not here now. Like that's not what you you're not seeing that stuff now. Like you're not you're not seeing like this. Like you said, it's so much mental health. And not saying that mental health is not an issue, but it's just like 
you know, it's so much, you know, like they worry about everything else. And, you know, like you said, social media is a presence and they worry about this and they worry about this going on. So it's so different watching sports now, watching professional athletes. Like it's, it's just crazy. Like, like you said, the stuff that they worry about and they don't be worried about the win. They don't really care about the win. You got, you watch teams now that don't even care about like, yeah, we make it to the playoffs. It is what it is. I don't really even care. You ain't never had, you think about all the teams and stuff like when Jordans and you had Detroit and you had Houston and then you had the Lakers, then you had Boston. You had every team was coming at their necks every night. You don't have that no more. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't really have, and you really didn't have that many major injuries. That's another thing. Like it's almost like the, the professional athletes, you didn't see them get hurt, hurt all the time. Like it's like now, shoot, you don't know when the professional athlete, like he got to sit out. 20 minutes so then he don't get hurt that bad like i ain't never seen this like i'm like dude if i'm like like kobe said kobe said he played for that one little kid that come to the game that never seen him play before they don't do that you know what i'm saying like i come to the game ain't never seen this person play i come just for him he's my favorite guy and he sit out 30 minutes of the game you know what i'm saying so i don't i just think that it's the mentality i think it's the mentality and it ain't really just about the win of the game no more. It's really like they really using it to where it's either about them getting their money or, you know, it's about, you know, whatever else. Like they don't really care about the win. They don't really care about the team. It's, it's about every individual. Now. Uh, but, yeah, I agree with you completely. I just think that I think that and another thing I have a problem with is when you say that you um, disagree with or you don't want to give somebody like – all the attention to mental health is because when you put that much emphasis on the um when you put that much emphasis on like mental health you forget the fact that you're like there's still a game like it's like when are you asking it you know and it's like i just look at it for like it's a time and a place and i don't know can you see this yeah Like, like that makes that makes no sense. Like you clearly, you clearly see like her head is not in the game, and that's a lot of that. That's just that's it irritates me to get to. Um, they be wondering why ki- parents, I mean coaches, cuss at the kids, and I feel like if you maybe we ain't got to go to the extreme that coaches was cussing at us, but do you see why you gotta get them focused? And and I ain't saying cussing is a way to get them focused, but their mindset is not that. Like, and even professional people's mindset is not what the game is. You know, Ben Simmons, like, um, who played T.O. will tell you he played the Super Bowl with a broken leg. Um, so many Kobe shot two free throws with a torn Achilles. It's so many accounts where people's bones and stuff were broken, and you talking about something in my mind messes with my back calvary you know what i'm saying like it is it, but like i said we ain't here for all that i i just wanted to go and, you know what, now honestly it's a downhill slope bro. i think it's gonna get worse and worse and worse i just think we i just think we're gonna get to a place to where everything got acceptable and then we're gonna go back to extreme or not accept anything but i don't know so I did want to bring back the homegirl Miss Tierra is back again with us today. Uh, I did some of these last couple topics we got. I wanted to get a female's opinion on it. So we do have her in today. She is joining us live from Channel 5 on CNN Plus, on Disney Plus, and everything else. So, Miss Tierra, welcome back with us today. Um, I hope we did not pull you from any breaking news at the White House or at the Trap House. So, how are you doing with us? How are you doing? I'm sorry. How are you doing with us? How are you doing today? More so the trap, but hey, how you guys doing? New dreads. Oh, They're not even dreads. This is a little, little twist, a little, little something quick. Yeah. I had something to do. Something oh, okay. Quick. Okay. Little. You know, shout out the inches. No free shout outs. <laughs> no promo. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So we definitely wanted to bring you back on because we didn't want to get, we didn't want to put our opinion on some of these spills that we were looking at that come up from just a guy's opinion. I wanted to hear from the female's opinion, a female's perspective on some of these. So the first one I was going to hit was I see the double standard in 
when women c commit a crime versus when men commit a crime, right? And the victim, uh, the Joe Budden one and the Black China one all kind of goes synonymous. So, you know, um, Rob and I'm sorry, Black China is going Rob. against the Kar Kardashians. So I don't care about that shit that they're going through, but it's a particular part in that court case that came up where she was like, I put a iPhone charger and choke Rob and then I was playing, I put a loaded gun out and I was playing this entire time. And I bring it to, and I'm gonna merge the other one with Johnny Depp and old girl, I don't remember her name, but she Amber literally Heard. is, Amber Heard, okay. She basically got him fucked in the the industry right now, lost a million, I wanna say 650 million. Don't quote me, but uh, she's tarnished his name to be caught on camera, I mean, videotape saying you abused the man and it's getting publicity now because of the theatrics but we're not putting the same publicity that we put on for when r kelly was locking girls up and whatever chamber when we were saying protect that or when any male has done any type of assault remember when greg hardy threw his girl on some guns and she was like "Fucking kill me or any type of domestic dispute and both of these are domestic disputes from the opposite i mean johnny depp losing lost a finger so and she shit on his pillow and like it's so many and on top of that the back first off about this johnny depp thing this is crazy it's crazy. i don't know how you haven't i don't know how you haven't heard about it. that's the crazy part you ain't heard about johnny depp thing just from the memes alone of him laughing and her lawyers sounding so bad this has been going but, years though like this whole situation yeah it's been going on for a couple years it's actually up here in virginia which uh they was talking about at work hey we need to go up there and put uh signs up i'm like, I ain't going up there i'm like I'm, I'm gonna go up there and be like johnny johnny will you be on the podcast yeah. will you be on the podcast we work around just but i don't think he's gonna really be focused on anything yeah. like that at the time he might got something a little more pressing but i wanted to ask you know i'll start with the our guest for today the double standard for men and women why do you feel like it is so much easier to talk down a situation of a girl of a woman committing domestic because it happens more than people think so. domestic dispute than it is for us to automatically crucify a man because of like just look like this just the idea of a man and a woman like a man is looked at to be stronger in multiple ways than a woman so when you think about domestic abuse and there's that word abuse like oh a woman can't abuse a man especially in most in some situations where the man is bigger than the woman but she really like is abusing him like nobody really believes that but that does happen in those cases like amber and johnny like johnny's bigger than amber and she was abusing him like i but that's the only reason i can always think for it. and i also think that when it comes to like victims people do victimize women like they automatically victimize women like for example in the tory lane situation everybody knows how vocal i am i love tory i love megan to death so when this started two years ago i've been tuned in i'm waiting for the trial i need a verdict on this like i'm, I'm into it like in that whole situation from the beginning i was like i hate it like I hate it. I was getting in arguments with people on Facebook because I was like, I hate how you guys just assume that Megan did nothing to Tori. I was like, like, you just assume that she's telling the truth and they're like, you're supposed to stand by a woman. Like people were arguing me about that. And I'm like, when we say stand by a woman and trust her word, I'm like, no, we're speaking in terms of, uh, you know, rape like domestic I said think things that like, you know, things of that nature, not you lying and saying that. You know, whatever happened, and we you know whatever the case, like so many people just automatically took Megan's side. Like, I hated it. I was like, why did you guys just think? And that was their reasoning. Like, oh, you're just supposed to believe a woman. I'm like, no, you're supposed to believe everything. Like, no, you're supposed to listen to the story and get the fact and reach your conclusion. Then, like, no, you don't just jump the gun. But I don't know. I guess that where my mindset differs from a lot of people because I just, I can't just put somebody in a victim role because they say they're a victim because people do lie people are manipulative people do bully people in certain situations like to get what they want or like you know 
that's, that's, like, that's like with the Chris Brown situation. That I was gonna say that same thing. Where you had the, you know, the girl basically came out. He said he did this, that, and the third. But really, she was just trying to get some attention from him. And then once he had all the recordings, then it was like everybody was like, "Oh, we know Chris is this, and he did this, and we already know he's wrong." And but nobody even took a look at what was really going on. So it, it do suck that the man is automatically gonna get blamed, and the woman's gonna be like, "I feel so sad for her. Woe is me." You know, then the and, and you know, not to say like a lot of times the women are getting done wrong. Yeah. But you, yeah, but you still got to look at both sides, you know, because some people they are they just trying to get attention, or they trying to get money, or they or their heart is hurt. I think that's the biggest case. Somebody's heart is hurt, and they want something that they can't have. They do whatever to, they do whatever to try to make you feel the way they feel. Yeah, most definitely. I was going to go add to that because, um, and every time I try to send a video up, that's when my computer slows down. But it, um, I wanted to say for that point. If a guy was to do go up to um, a girl and put a loaded gun and talk about we was just playing and say that shit in a courtroom, what do you think will happen now? He's going under the jail. <laughs> exactly. Gonna every, like, look he gonna how they're going to be on Facebook, they're going to Instagram, they're going to have TikTok about him saying it. Like, they're going to mix it and remix it. And he's going to get destroyed. And when people see him out in public, they're going to talk bad to him. And it's like, and it, it irritates me because we're not saying that, like, we're not saying that, God, we know, we know niggas ain't shit, you know, and, but we also know that it take two to tango on some of this shit. So it's just, it just doesn't make sense to me how it's immediately the same credit or same empathy isn't given. Like you said, the Megan Tory situation, me personally, I don't give a fuck about it at this point, because for somebody who ain't talking about it, we know all the details of it. But remember, Tory was canceled. You just don't shoot. First off, niggas was really wild for that. Let's get this point out of the way. You just don't shoot a woman. That's where you draw the line. Now, you could beat her, cheat on her, fuck a mom's or a sister. You know what I'm saying? You could do everything else, but you don't shoot a woman. I didn't really know that was. I felt like the, that was for what people felt the bar of canceling Tory was of where that's where you draw the line of where we got to protect women is shooting them after you dog them, cheat on them uh get them pregnant and don't take care of the kids like the shooting we shouldn't shoot a motherfucker period but his his car was taken because he allegedly shot her that was the wild part but it's just as men like it is so like she said that in the johnny depp case she literally laughed at the whole um domestic abuse from a man and that's probably do you i wonder how close if if all men were to honestly tell the truth about how much domestic like because think if you think about the, the baby shit with danny lay his was domestic he just happened to call the cops on her but because he's problematic you know what i'm saying we took and and because people didn't really care for danny lay you just didn't really dismiss the fact you i'm sorry you dismissed the fact that he was calling the police on her getting violent with him and he got called punk so or if a man calls the cops on the female for hitting him he's a punk and I was trying to pull this video. Let's see if it come up. I was trying to pull this video up just to show, like, it is very hard to, like, be a, a man because um, it's, it's like you don't get any you don't get any of the doubt for anything. Right. Like you just you just it's like it's this guy at the gym. And I don't know if y'all seen this clip or not, but it's this guy at the gym and this chick recording. And I guess he's seen her um, doing a workout and he goes and puts a mat there and she says in the video because her tweet says i'm working down the corner this man randomly comes and attempted to shove a mat underneath me and it be and uh because i'd be more comfortable if he asked whether i wanted to i wouldn't mind but i think it's abrupt i think abruptly doing so is evading my space and it's weird even if you're just being nice like it's it's no winning on being a guy in 2020 whatever we in whatever we are 2022 now but until it stops like you get nothing as a man nowadays. Like you, if he was in a gym, and he would have let her kill herself because she doing something wrong, bust a damn pelvis or something like that. What type of man is you that's just gonna let her sit there and just have the mat out, not help a woman? Where's chivalry at? But chivalry is no longer existing because if we do anything, we step in your private space, and it's like I said, we don't get the benefit of the doubt for nothing. It's it's very hard, and I bring that back to the original point of. This I, shit is, I think a lot. I think a lot of it is 
everybody wants to be equal until it's time to be equal. So, oh, of course. And so that that's that's a big portion of it. Like, yeah, oh, I want the equal, I want the equal pay. I until the pay. bill come and then you see somebody gotta pay. Kind of be equal, but but and then I, I was gonna say on the celebrity, just to add on celebrity before you change it, I think a lot of reasons why the man get hit harder too, because a lot of times the big celebrity in the situation is the man. And a woman is somebody we don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So, and two years later, when the shit cool off, we not even gonna know what that girl looked like no more. You know what I'm saying? Except for the Megan, the Megan case, both of them are big, both of them big names. You know, but most of the time, the the big celebrity is the man, like whoever the man is. You know, because that you are gonna hear about that. So most of the time, the the media and the people they ready to drag a celebrity. Like they don't care if he wrong or did wrong or whatever. They just want to make it where it's gonna be funny, or they just ready to drag the person. So. I think that's another big hit because, like I said, most of the time the, the lady or whoever's going on, you know, these dudes they get with these beautiful models and stuff, and they be shit all crazy. You know what I'm saying? And then they be like, I don't know why I'm going through all this shit. Like I miss this girl because she crazy. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, she just pretty and she crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. So, like, why make it into something that it's not? You know what I'm saying? No like kids. That. no kids. I, over there. You, you had talked to males before, and a dude would tell you like. Man, I ain't gonna lie, bro. She bad, but man, that mug is thrown off, and they still mess with her. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't care. So you can't, you can't be like, I don't know why my life is so. I'm going through so much distress. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm talking to this crazy motherfucker. Like, oh, she pretty. We go out. You know what I'm saying? We we stunned on them, but when we get back in the house, yeah, man, she crawling up the walls and shit. You know what I'm saying? She need an exorcism. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Like you, you are you doing it to yourself. Throw some holy water on that pussy. I just don't <laughs> think that I just don't think that we'll ever get to that point to where because as long as men are the bigger species and the bigger, you know, the more masculine term for people, however they want to say masculinity is involved, I don't think we'll ever commit. I mean, I'm sorry, get the benefit of the doubt. The same way you don't see is it's men that get sexually assaulted. You ain't never gonna hear that. It's like if a man gets sexually assaulted by a woman, he a punk. And you know, ain't no man gonna tell nine times ten ain't gonna tell if another man sexually assault him. So but I just—that's that's the other big thing, though. Just mentality. The male, you got a lot of males in the world that get raped, they get things happen, to them, and they feel like you know it's gonna hurt their pride to tell somebody. So a lot of times they're not gonna say it. The man is not gonna say like, yes, you know, she drugged me or this happened because then they feel lesser than a man. So I think that's another big thing. So about time the woman come out and say what's going on, if the man come back and be like, well, you do this to me, then it just seems like it's a revolt when it's been going on the whole time. Yeah. I did want to ask, even with the victim in book, so let's just say that Tori does go to jail for this. Um, I, I'm going to bring one topic to the front. So let's just say this goes, huh? He's not. I doubt so let's, just, let's, just say, let's just say, let's just say hypothetically, right? If he found guilty for it, I looked at something Joe Budden said, and he said a point that I I kind of semi like the paint what he said. So is you do something in a domestic uh, dispute with somebody, how long do you criminalize a person? Like Chris Brown situation. Whenever somebody get beat, Chris Brown name get brought into it all. Chris Brown ain't had a situation with Rihanna since we was got out of high school. But it's ne his name is attached to it. And he said basically it comes from the victim becomes a bully because every time that the person tries to move on, they're always labeled. Yeah, I see them. what you're talking about, the Joe Button. I seen that. Yeah, and I was just wondering, like, is I want I want to I guess I want to ask if you're a victim, do you? I know you have the right all the time, but in your in your opinion, if y'all were victims. Do you feel that the person who did something wrong to you, as long as it's not murder, I'm not going to do that. If you're a victim, do you feel that the you're a person who did something to you? Do they feel like, do you feel like they ever get to a point where their life needs to go on? Or do you think that they always need to be looked at as like, there you go, right there. Witch hunt. I, it depends. It depends. Like I said, I, to, to his point, I played devil's advocate because that's say that it's your mom's. Let's say that you you a kid and it's your mom's, and let's say some dude you seen it do it wrong, you seen them you know force them to have sex or you know some some baby boy type shit, you know what I'm saying? And you fucking you know he beat on her and all this shit, 
every time I see that, every time somebody mentions his name, every time it's brought up, every time somebody interview me, like I'm gonna talk on it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like a lot of victims, like if they are the victim and somebody did something to you, like they got that respect. They get they they should be able to talk about it all the time. Like, yeah, this person gonna move on, but a lot of times what it happened is a person that got money, a celebrity got money, like that's say the man or the woman got money and they do something to somebody and then they just go through the court system, they win the they win the shit, even though they was wrong because they got money, it's swept under the rug. So now this but that, ain't, but that ain't been the case in most recent. Like you can't lot, tell me it, it, it's <laughs> exactly the case, but I'm just saying still in general, when a per, when a celebrity do something, that's like the next day you'll see them on the yacht. Or doing something crazy because they just like ah you know i ain't worried about it like i'm good out here so yeah the victim gonna feel some type of way i think should. we've done a, I think we've done a good role of like reversing the accountability like you shouldn't just do something in the past and it'd be like what well, happened in the past but in the eyes of public perception not in the eyes of the people like i can understand if you want to whoop the nigga who was beating your mama ass every time on site but like joe smoke from the block <laughs> there go there go ddt uh Derek over there yeah he be known like you know do you do you do you are you allowed to make a mistake and re move on from that and move on from that mistake because that's essentially I guess that's essentially the, the reverb of the question are you allowed to move on from that mistake or do you have to sit there and be shamed for the whole time go it's, ahead, go ahead it still depends because like if you in the eyes of everybody in the eyes of everybody it really depends because okay cool say you you call it a mistake. Okay, cool. Say somebody, say, say a man, say somebody beat my ass. Okay, say somebody beat the hell, this dude beat the hell out of me, whatever, me and him got into it. Uh, and we, he beat my ass. Now, if, now, me and him, is we're done, whatever, you know, whatever. Every time, you know, like, I, me personally, now, I wouldn't victimize, like, I, would, I wouldn't victimize, like, I wouldn't victim bully. Meaning that, if it happened and i know that person is not that type of person like temperatures like it like it's something where it was literally an emotion anger like like you just got out of pocket no i, I don't want to i'm not gonna rock with you no more i don't I'm gonna mess with you no more or in or you know whatever the case may be but at the same time i'm not going to continuously drag your name through the mud and make you out to be somebody that you're not now if now there's also to say Okay, what if you this man is a serial beater? Everybody, every woman he with, he beat her ass. Like, no, yes, yes, we need to like that needs to be known, that needs to be said. So it's like, and it's crazy because like we live in a world where like things like like you like you got victim bullying and then you got people victims that don't say anything. And that then then that that's where people start to victim bully in a sense too because they begin to advocate in a sense for the people who aren't saying anything. So like it's it's I don't feel like it's it's no right answer to that because I feel like it's just always gonna it's just gonna always be a back and forth with the case because at the end of the day it's about how the victim feels and how you know how they yeah. take it. Like if they if they feel like like say that like you did something to me, you can't tell me to get over that. You can't tell me to let that go. Like if I, every time I see you, it's on site. Every time I see you, I'm knocking your head off. Every like you it know, is, it is what it is. <laughs> like Peter and the chicken. If on site, if on site was a person, yeah. Yeah, I guess I like did. Peter, yeah, but Tom and Jerry. <laughs> that's that. But that's just like like you you see a lot of people that you see in red flag right now. You know what I'm saying? Like like Trey Songs. We ain't got nothing that really came out that said <laughs> for sure. Oh, but, yeah, he, but he fucking like he tiptoeing, like he there. Like some yeah, them numbers coming up for Trey. You know, I I, yeah, I, I they, stopped yeah. the way to get I, I just I just stayed out of it. I ain't I ain't gave my pain on it all. Motherfuckers been saying trade name like it. So I guess Man, I can go with the, I guess I can like that's what, no, I'm talking about Rory said something. I'm talking about his name is going up there. So and Trey ain't said a damn word. He ain't but, said nothing. So people so he so i like when that one girl the basketball player hey trey songs rape me all right have a good day like that's a that's a wild accusation that's not like saying hey we having chicken alfredo at seven if you want a plate come pull up like that was a wild accusation to make it nine o'clock in the morning as if nobody was gonna see it and then you post a regular picture of you shooting basketball like the next clip like that was a wild thing to do like but i guess we can cut it to get to the next one um i just i think like y'all said i agree with both of y'all i think it's it depends on it and I guess it's just like somebody getting offended at a joke. I can't tell you how to react to whatever is traumatic. I just want to know if 
if you make a mistake, I guess I guess I can answer my own question. Depending on the mistake, you're gonna have to harbor the baggage and you can't control when it's over. So it's consequences to every mistake. Right. And if you do something, however long the length of consequences is, you shouldn't have did the shit. So I guess that's probably the easiest way to tie that one. And, um and, I and the, the I was just gonna say you gotta always think that it's not the good things that you do to people remember is the bad things. That's what drag you on. You know what I'm saying? Like you can do it. You can be Nobel Peace Prize, like Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby did so much great shit in the community, black, black shows, like all Ooh, stuff. Please, he, please, then, please, like, please, like, now, please. Don't, don't I mean, but he did. You can't say, you can say. No, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying, please. Bill, I'm just saying, please. He, he, brought, he brought a lot of, you know, like even like the, uh, like any of the, the comedians on TV shows, like all the stuff he was doing, he did a lot of stuff, but it don't matter if you out here being, you know what I'm saying, the Grinch, you know what I'm saying, that's that's stealing people, you know what I'm saying, like they don't want to care. So it, it don't really matter all the great things that you did if you're out here doing the pie, be the uh, Be the Pied Piper or R&P. But I did want to get to another topic that I had before, because I'm looking at that timer, I want to make sure we hit this hour mark, at least a little bit, not an hour and 30 minutes. But, um, this lip singing girl, I think her name was whatever, Bro Bridges, whatever her name is. Um, Brooklyn Briggs. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you sound so like if anybody. Nobody. You said what? That was no, nice. nobody they're, I don't, they're dragging this. They're dragging it. I don't, I don't care about her. My question, I guess my irritation is I get tired of black people. First off. We gonna start taking black people's invitation to the barbecue because you niggas is handing out invitations like it's willy nilly. Like we, motherfuckers not everybody get one. If motherfuckers sneeze and they say, "Boy, if you don't say excuse me, this white man get germs," and you hand him an invitation. This white girl had did the same thing that you do every morning. Every when you week. go to work, <laughs> which is recite a damn lyric to a song. Every black wedding. What is the three songs that they play? They play, um, it's the same one they play. They play probably Earth, Wind, and Fire, and they play International Players Anthem, and Man. then they play, um, um, what is it? I think it's BB and CC Wyans. A lot of songs they play. Whatever, but oh, it's Step in the Name of Love. Let's just say they stay, niggas is still playing Step in the Name of Love secretly. They, no, they're not. No, they're not. Yeah, really? la trust yeah. me, they are. I Step in the name of love. Yes. Okay. Look, we didn't want to tell on y'all, but we know y'all still playing R. Kelly. All right. You just you just tune his hey, voice down. But music. all I know is there has been no time when I've said, uh, my bitch you choose it, level never fuck without a rubber. Nobody has ever recorded me singing that. And if I was to sit on that bitch now though, so everybody knows tearing up my heart when I'm with you. Ain't nobody ever recorded me singing the backstreet boys, okay. So the fact of the matter is we put so much emphasis on giving white people passes for the bare minimum. I just want to get y'all opinion on like the whole spill before I give my longer take. It's, it's, it's <laughs> like you said, like, what did she do? She was at a wedding reciting little baby lyrics with something I see every day on my Snapchat from everybody with a beer in her hand. Bud like looking white and country <laughs> with a lighter in her hand. She even had a Michelob. She had a Bud Light. Like, damn, what type of country backwoods shit is this? I'm like, there was not one. We just gonna talk about Bud Light like it's Paul, like it's Paul or something. <laughs> I'm saying, but I'm saying that's white people E and J, bro. I'm telling you, they'll go to like, a wedding with a full. I, I would have my wedding with canned drinks at my wedding. <laughs> But I was thinking, I was thinking the same thing. And there was not one piece of color at that wedding. I, maybe they were in the background. I don't know. No random disclaimer. But I didn't see any color at that wedding. So why did we as a community pick that video up and see? It's just like when a thick white girl, she get up here twerking. Oh, she go internationally viral. Oh, the black girls better watch out. We don't care. Nobody cares. Nobody like nobody cares about any of this. Like you guys, are, you guys put too much emphasis on like, okay. I, you got to feel me when I say this. We put too much emphasis on black and not a, and not for the right reasons. Like, she's not going, she's not advocating for us. She's singing a damn song. Like, exactly. she's she's not doing anything where, where she, like, she ain't marching 
out here doing riots or anything like that. She ain't helping pass, uh, you know, getting these laws changed, you know, getting getting the the the, the segregation that's in the world that we try to ignore that's still there, that's not there removed. Like we're not, she's not doing that. Like we're not getting invited to their cookouts. You go viral singing a country song. They're up under your, they're in your comments slandering you. You slandering fucking nigger. You. We don't want your big baboon I, lips touching our, come on now. They, look like, what they did to Lil Nas X. Like you're not getting invited to the cookout. You getting invited to the lynching. So why, exactly. <laughs> why, are we, why are we putting so much emphasis on it? And personally, and I do want people to get off of her also. Cause at the same time, I feel like she is running with it because now she's become an influencer. But who wouldn't like make your money, girl? Do what you gotta do. Like if I if I go viral and I see a way that I can become an influencer and start making some money, I'm gonna do that. Like shoot, whatever. But at the same time, she did not go viral by herself or on her own. I'm like she went viral. She was at a wedding. They were recording her. It went viral. It wasn't like she planned this and tried to make it happen. Like it was an accident, and it started a whole debate now. And she's running with it. And at the end of the day, she's still getting the white man get paid off for all of that. Like they still, like Kanye, they still get paid. It doesn't matter. What so what what so what's the two sides of the debate? What do you feel like the two sides of the debate and what side are you on? I would I would say my side of the debate is I feel that we go out our way to give people credit to doing shit that we do all the time and when they get a little piece like she was doing i think it's called cameo is a site she was about to go viral just for singing songs to lyrics to people you want me to do a cameo until she got caught saying nigga so i just happened that's that's the only reason i seen that because they were saying how quick she got canceled so she got caught for saying if anybody wonder why i got this bobcat uh her name is brooklyn stags she got this scratch on her eye she said i went and go touch the nigga and he scratched me back and on top of that i'm not saying it's excused but i would expect for you to be putting nigga in your tweets you should at least be married to a black man for you to feel so freely in your vernacular and your speech to be sitting out there saying the n-word which is still not correct but clearly you get he out there letting you get off the hook with saying some shit i would have never let you but for you to be married to a white man then using this in your regular speech so i already know the unedited version of when the n-word was coming on you was going to be clearly saying it so you boasting up these people that use and get into our culture but i was watching the episode of atlanta right paperboy try to put the money into the community for they have you you caught up on atlanta either no, I ain't caught so, up yet. So, anyways, they did a part of the episode where they this white company did the Central Park Five clothing, which is you know the uh, when they see us, you know the exonerated five, and it's just like you know when Gucci made that. I guess it was supposed to be when Gucci made that nigga like that rope or that mask shit, and so you know they needed a black face to apologize for white people. So when when and I'm about to connect it here. Paperboy said, let's take an initiative to put money back into the black community. And it was supposed to be a black commercial. But when the industry got it, they made it all lives matter, saying all neighborhoods. And that's essentially what they do. They'll come out here and they'll ride with the culture. But if some shit come on, that victim shit, she know when she she white, you know. So I just think and and black people always go to her defense. Like, I just think she vibe and I just think she this. I just and I'm not hating if you went viral off of that. I just wanted to know what made that so fascinating that we just jump for joy to every time a white person do the things that we overlook on a daily, we put that as triumphs. I feel like we are so pitiful sometimes for their approval or their acceptance or show that we're getting closer to a balance that we will just, you ever just seen like if, if a nigga don't ever clean the house ever house junkie, if a nigga take his shoes upstairs one day, or pick a sock up you'd be like oh boy he trying you know what i'm saying like you think like you just you'll just take the bare minimum and i just tired of us coasting up them because now she's viral taking money off of a little baby song who little baby is african-american and until she got caught saying the n-word but they don't do the same for us unless it's jokes or unless it's comp like i said we've some we all know the backstreet boys we all know they lyrics we all know a miley cyrus song or a doge or well, i mean um a ever essence song or garf somebody know a white song in a playlist that they listen to 
you know, Avril Lavigne, um, Amy Winehouse. What's her name? Um, the girl with the she, the girl that uh, Kanye had that one song. Me hmm? already. Like this is just music because I listen to a lot of these people that you're listening to that you listen to. <laughs> you said come out all these. What you don't listen to them? Do. <laughs> That's what I said. I said we listen to their music, but we're not. We're not doing. We don't get the same place if we can recite a song. So why is this such a big thing that she's reciting a rap song? First of all, why are y'all listening to rap song at a white people wedding? That was the weird part about it. Like you, that's that's just weird. Like we're not playing. Um, but, but at the end of the day, you got you got whatever preferences. I'm not gonna go into that. It was just weird from that standpoint. But that's my point on it. I'll cut it there, so I'm not <laughs> rambling. That's I mean, my oh, I, I, like. I feel like you gotta think at the end of the day to be 100. We are the minority when it comes to social media anyway so even if like we are like social like we, we make social media okay, look you you had your point let me make my point thank you meet yourself thank you so we fucking um uh, we make social media yeah we are the, we are the people that put everything out cool but that still don't mean that we not the minority you know what i'm saying like we we could make a song i could do a dance and the white people gonna always go viral because they are the majority on social media you know what i'm saying like so yeah we are the creators and we make it out just like hey we built this country but we ain't in charge of this mother you know what i'm saying so it like who made her go viral like yeah you had some black people in that comment but it wasn't the black people that made her go viral you know what i'm saying like it's like it is the everybody else bro like it, it really is like that's why you would do a song bro you you can do it could be a black the blackest of the blackest song and you'll go on TikTok and look up like the top people on the videos and it ain't going to be us you know what i'm saying it's going to be the, it's going to be some young white girl dancing that look crazy that's offbeat and that's who's going to go viral with it so you know what i'm saying like that's just that's reality you know and and like you said it just sucks because the black creators and the black people they not getting that love, you know what I'm saying? And the love they do get, it's got to be some some niggerish shit. It's got to be some drama, some niggerish shit, or it's got to be so crazy outrageous. You like, damn, I ain't no motherfucking niggas are doing shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, oh, we gotta get shot by the police. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's got to be some drama. It's got to be some some so drastic. Some so it just sucks because all of the stuff that really go viral, we the ones that make it. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it, it's trash, but that's the reality when it comes to social media. Like, that, like she gonna go viral regardless because they gonna be like, cause it's gonna be all the way. Like, oh my god, y'all seen her? Like, she cool. Like, they let her in. Like, look at all the black comments. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's gonna make it go even more viral. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Yeah, I, th I also think people need to remember that social medias are they're segregated, low key. They like, are. There is a whole black like universe that we're in that they get to tip like he said like oh they let her in oh she's cool like oh they get to tip their toe in and they take yeah. it over there they take yeah. it there and they you know like it's crazy because like if you can if you can get your toe into you know the other side of the you, ramp and you, you got to be perfect in the world is going on over here or you're or you're like or then you start to look at like you gotta look at that like, you look at yourself you might look at yourself crazy because i've gotten been able to dip my toe in and i'm like what is this like how yeah. did i like, you got to get, like, how did I get an invite? <laughs> yeah, I just, I agree. Like, it's, it's like, it's the same Atlanta episode. Uh, Darius took the white chick to a J Nigerian spot for, um, and I know, I can't think of it. Of course, it's always when I get on the mic. Uh, I know you might know, what is the, the rice? Um, it starts with a J. Um, anyways, it's the, the Nigerian rice, and I'm not going to mess it up, so I'm not going to say it. It's just Jolof, jo, uh, Jolof, that's what it was. I couldn't think of it. But so he takes her to a Nigerian restaurant. She likes it. She goes and buys it. When he comes back, she sees she clo he closed the restaurant. Uh, they closed the restaurant, bought it out, and then they make their own Jolof and basically white it up to make it more custom because it was either too spicy or whatever. But they you this like they integrate it and that's what like you said when they come in they try to take it over and i just look at it from like when all them white people is getting credit for all them black tiktok dances and then you know you see what happened when they stopped giving them dances they dances weren't going viral so i just look at it for like and and all y'all niggas that want to beat just say you want to beat and stop defending this shit like you wouldn't defend she just like come on 
like people be doing like people be doing i hate this new age cooning that some of us do ain't nobody saying you ain't down with white people when you comment on something they do but at the same time i'm not sitting here giving nobody hype over the same things that we do every day that we're not taking like it's the one step one uh this one whatever from when neil armstrong walked on the moon it's not life changing and we put it on this pedestal like you ever seen like when special needs kids get the highest applause all the time that's how we be treating white people doing the same shit we do every day but then when we do it back and forth we we getting tore the fuck down you know what i'm saying like we can call lame or whatever it's it's just wild to me so like 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 let my black ass been at a uh, at a um a wedding with a beer that would have been called ghetto all this but because they have their standards you know like she vibing or you remember that one black dude that was at a wedding with a damn dog chain on and yeah he, he was a black dude his wife was white he coming up in the dog chain like oh it's like i'm like hell no so i just we just we be cooning sometime this new age cooning where you don't check people and think that if you check somebody on something that's not cool like if somebody call your sister a bitch or you call somebody a gay slur or whatever like and you check them on it it's going to be a problem so like let's stop you can you could check somebody on something and still be respectful on how you check them i feel like that's where the disconnect is like she just vibing everything ain't this and i'm like no bro like it's it's not that was that was my last one i think we we're not gonna have enough time to hit this last fake orgasm topic so um i know i know i'm sorry but i did want to keep this one short. let's just go let's go five minutes oh bro because i know because we got to keep it short because one you got to say your goodbyes and then two it's already at a minute an hour and ten so uh we'll just we'll just plan it um miss miss teasy miss terry um terry with the two r's she'll be back and um i'll ask it um i definitely ain't gonna ask two niggas about some fake orgasms but i i want to give it the attention that it requires for a sexual talk if we go that round but wow. anybody got i know girl look at you cover my nipples up i know it's getting a little hot in here you know hold on one so let me let me sh- no, but you know me so that's blurdy let me blur these titties real quick one second but uh so uh anybody got any last remarks before we uh close out have fun on your deployment i heard you was leaving yeah i leave on tuesday i leave I'll be safe you know don't go crazy out there i ain't go crazy i'm i'm, I'm ready for it <laughs> are you ready for a break right, right. i'm ready for that break just to get away from it and i'm going to, i'm going to countries i ain't never been to so i think that's gonna be different it's gonna be a, all the asian countries but i think it's gonna be cool okay. you being a thug because you don't hear because the first half we was talking about emotions and he's sad but not yeah you know i'm really looking forward to it you know seven they might let me drive the boat yeah you know like the car in the town you know before you was on before you was on it was you know i just um <laughs> i just i just want to you know just take my head clear and get back and stay the course and you know we come <clears throat> she, she got this smile boys got deeper and shit. i was about to say damn nigga. Shit, oh, yeah. okay <laughs> joshua you know <laughs> you know i might serve board you know yeah. Like, yeah, this is all good. <laughs> no, like exactly. Yeah, I appreciate you, boo boo. But uh, no, nah. I said I would have kept this shit going. But bro, I hate, you don't understand how long it takes to edit this shit. So I gotta stop playing with shit on camera. You don't uh you don't understand how long it takes to edit. Like if it's an hour or whatever. Okay. Hmm? You said what? You just a baby. It don't take that long. Shut up. We'll delete this part. We'll delete this guest, and we'll just stop it at the draft. This will be a sports episode now. <laughs> We uh we appreciate you coming back on, ma'am. Josh, we are going to miss you. Everybody, give a round of applause for one of the one of the best co-hosts I've ever had on here. You know, we want to thank you. We want to wish you a very very good time on that comfort, which we hope it is a car. You want a mercy? I want a mercy. Okay. Well, we hope they show you mercy are while you, you on that water. You know. Oh, bye. I thought he was going somewhere. Oh, please. Oh, no, man. That's what I said, bro. I'm a, I'm a first class on the mercy and radiology. Like, we good. We right appreciate now. you for your service, King. Please, uh, please, 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 you know, respect the, the act and the unacted. I don't have that. I should have put it on here. 
But this has been another episode of the Hate More Than 92 podcast. We always keep 100. We're going to holler at y'all later. Peace. Back in this bitch, uh. No, we full attack in this shit, uh. You know the full Mac came equipped, uh. So promise you don't want no.